Now, Andrew. Mother's Day. God uses examples distinctive to motherhood to help us understand our own feelings. One thing that he said was sorrow will be turned into joy. When Jesus told his disciples that he was going away, that he was going to suffer many, under, or, or many things, and that he would be leaving them, they really didn't understand. And then he told them that their sorrow would be turned into joy when he would send the Holy Spirit. In the Gospel of John, Jesus said that, um, and this is going to be in verse 16, but I just want to read a couple, one, one verse to you. And I've lost my place already. Verily I say unto you, yes. So he went to his disciples and he had told them that he would be leaving them. They had this discussion. He told them he would be sending the Holy Spirit. He says, verily, verily I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. And ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. And then in John chapter 16, verse 21, he used this comparison. So he tried to explain them. This is the way I can explain it to you best. A woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And so God had used this to help his disciples, or the Lord Jesus had to help, her, help his disciples understand that sometime there is pain and then there is good that comes from the pain. And uh, that their sorrow would be turned into joy. And he was kind of saying, just think of it this way. Look at a woman who is in travail. And travail means that labor, that labor, that labor that they have and the pain that they go through. And how many of you know, have you ever heard too many women say, well, you, I have never heard it, that I'm not going to have another one because of all the pain and sorrow and anguish that I had to go through when I, had, when I, was, when I, when I went through all of that, through all that labor and delivery and that nine months of carrying the child. And, and some, some women are sick, right? Luckily, I never was. But how many know that if it was, if, if God had not taken that away and turned all that into joy, that our world would never have populated to the extent that it is now. It has never stopped anyone that I ever know of from saying, hey, I'm not going to have any more. Now, we'll say we're not going to have any more because we can't afford it. And we'll say we can't have, we're not going to have any more because it's just not happening. And, but never have I heard anyone say, well, I just can't stand all that I had to go through. So, and I'm sure there may be women out there. But God uses examples that are very uh, distinctive to women to explain some of our own feelings. That that time of travail, that time that we go through, the time that the disciples were going through, is times that we go through when we are going through so much anger and so much sorrow. And he's saying, just remember, when you get into a time like that, when you get, begin to feel overcome with grief, when you're overcome with sorrow, when you're overcome with pain, when, you, when that comes upon you, then remember that some, sometime this pain will be gone and it will be turned into joy. And you will not look back at that pain anymore. God uses examples of motherhood to help us understand his feelings toward us. He uses an example of motherhood to help us understand his feelings toward us. Sing, O heavens, and be, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains, for the Lord hath comforted his people and will have mercy on his afflicted. 
But Zion said, The Lord hath forsaken me, and my Lord has forgotten me. The Lord has forsaken me, and my Lord has forgotten me. I'm sure there's times in all of our lives that we have wondered, I, I in the past had wondered, has the Lord, does he know what I'm going through? Does he remember me? Look in Isaiah, if you will, chapter 49, verse 15. Because then, when Zion, or when the Jewish people, or when we feel that the Lord has forgotten us or forsaken us, what happened next was that the Lord asked them a question. See, when you get to feeling that way, you need to stop and listen to what God is saying because God asked them a question. This is 49, chapter 49, verse 15. He asked them, Can a woman forget her second child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? And then he answered them, Yes, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Okay, the question, can a mother forget her child? And I know everyone in here would check their heads and say no, but the truth be known, women every day have had children and had had for some reason to walk away from them and leave them. Can a woman forget her child that she shouldn't have compassion on him? And you and I would say no. That a mother would always have compassion on her child. But that is not in the day that we're living in, that is not always true. There are women who don't have compassion. This is for the one who, who, who says, I don't know how much compassion my mother had for me. But listen, he says yes. The Lord says yes. They can forget. And everybody, look, yet will I not forget you. See, the Lord used this to describe his feelings towards you. He says, I'm not going to forget you. Never, never, never. Look what he says in 49.16. And I love this. And you guys have heard this too. I love this. Behold, I have graven you upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Behold, I have graven you on the palms of my hands. I, he has us right. He has our name written right in the palm of his hand. He'll never forget us. What did he say? What did Hebrews say? I will never. He has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Amen. And when you look up the word forsake in, in the Greek, it means that I will never leave, be, never leave you behind in some place. I will never leave you behind in some place. Behold, I have graven you upon the palms of my hands. It is not possible for me to forget you. It is not possible for me to forget your situation. It is not possible for the Lord God to forget everything involved in our life. Behold, I have graven your name in my hand. It is there continually before me. The walls are continual, or your walls, your walls are continually before me. God remembers you, and that love is a constant abiding remembrance of us. But the word also gives us a lot of wisdom concerning women, just women. I don't mean just women. I'm saying independent of our children. How does that sound? Women, independent of their children. And I think these words right here that come out of Proverbs, ver, uh, chapter 31, 30, are very, I like them. This is what Proverbs says. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that fears the Lord shall be praised. So whether you be a mother or not a mother, whether you're thinking of your children or you're thinking of your family and your friends, a woman that fears the Lord or follows the Lord shall be praised. 
And I want to just give you quickly some a, a few things that I found about women in general. that the Bible says. Mark, in Mark, in the Gospel of Mark, it tells us that the women were the last at the cross. But Mary Magdalene and Mary, the son of Joseph, beheld where he was laid. They were the ones that stayed. John says they were first at the tomb. Remember what we learned on Easter morning? It was early on Sunday morning when Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away and that the body of Jesus was gone. God uses women in his ministry. Matthew says they were first to claim or to proclaim the resurrection. For then... It says that, that these women, or Mary Magdalene, departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and, and ran to take the news to the disciples. Luke says they were first to preach to the Jews. Because right after the birth of Jesus, when Mary and Joseph took the baby Jesus to the temple, they ran into two people, and one of those people was a woman. And her name was Anna, and she was a prophetess. And when she seen that baby in the temple, it said that she gave thanks to God. And then she spoke of him to all that were in Jerusalem that had been looking for redemption. And Acts tells us that they were at the first prayer meeting. Acts says they all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women. And the mother, and Mary the mother of Jesus, and with all the brethren. They all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women. The women. The Mary, Mary and all the others. So the history of the Bible, of the Word of God, tells us that women played a very specific place in the Gospel. So, I'm always so thankful that I'm a child of God. Amen? I'm glad that God brought me to a place where I needed to be. I'm glad he brought me to where he wanted me to be. I raised my kids from their birth until Amanda was 13. I never gave in them God. I never encouraged them to be in church. And sometimes mothers and fathers blame themselves later, don't they? At the time, maybe you don't always realize for things that your kids have done or not done. I mean, I do. I think most of us do when I look at my kids and then I'll think, they're adults now. And there was a lot of years I think, well, if I hadn't done this, maybe this would have been different. If I had done more of this, maybe it would have been different. And you know, I've said this before, but like when my son, Joe, got into trouble when he was a teenager, <clears throat> I thought if I hadn't taken that second shift job at CTS, I would have been home with him at night. He wouldn't have got into the trouble that he got into. And so you young mothers... Someday you're going to go through the same thing. It's not going to be, it's going to be, our children mean so much to us that we'll look back over our lives and say, had I done this differently, would that have changed the course of this one's life? But you know what? I thank God in heaven that the one thing that did change in my life was that I became a Christian 
and I, I made him Lord of my life and therefore I have given that to my children that they are able to to have that being a mom isn't easy <laughs> and just because just because they're little and you got to take care of them sometimes it changes but it's not always been easy <laughs> it's not always been easy right it's not always fun being a mom oh it's it's fun some days some days it's not it's fun when you can take them to grandma's and dump them off feels good when you come and they oh mommy mommy it's more than changing diapers and more than dishes and laundry and cooking and all that and all that other stuff you got to do it's not easy but there is one thing that's easy you know what's easy making mistakes that's easy it's easy making mistakes but I guess you know what you need to know, or what, what us mothers need to know, no matter how old our children are, or how old we are, that at least someday, if not today, it may be at our eulogy. Hopefully someone will stand up and say, oh, that woman in Proverbs, you know, Proverbs said that you know, all the things that are not important. But a woman that fears the Lord shall be praised. Thank God. I want someday somebody to say thank God for my mother. I, I think they will, but I'm not going to ask them today. They might be mad at <laughs> They might be mad at me today. I want to show you one more thing and then I'm going to let you go. You got to think about this. You got to consider it. Consider what the Lord has said. This is out of back to Isaiah. And back to chapter 49. Verse 25 starts out, but, but thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be, shall be delivered. Stop, because the next two lines is what I want you to hear. For I will contend with him that contendeth with thee, and I will save thy children. I will contend with him that contendeth with... I will contend with him that contendeth with thee, and I will save thy children. I will contend. And I looked at the word in contend in the Webster's Dictionary. And basi basically it means to argue, or to dispute, to struggle, to fight. So if we change that, it's like the Lord is saying, I will fight with him that fights with you. I will argue with him that argues with you. I will, if there's a dispute against you, I will be in the middle of that dispute. Hey, we got a lawyer that we don't even have to pay for, amen? <coughs> if you have a struggle in your life, and someone's causing a struggle in your life, I will be in that struggle. Anybody messes with you, I'm in the middle of it. I'm a God of battles. And you know what? As mothers or, or fathers or parents or, or whatever, we need to remember that every day. That when we are in the middle of something, that God is on our side. Amen? Amen. We talked about that last week. If it wasn't for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? Amen. How would I have made it without Him? If there's a battle in your life, the Lord is always going to step in on your behalf. Yes. But the promise here 
is not that you will win every battle. But with the Lord on our side, how can we lose? Right? How far are we going to go? I don't know. But what is that second promise? Promise number one, I'm going to be on your side. I'm going to step in and fight with anybody that messes with you. And then, what does it say after that? I will save thy children. Is this word only to that day? Only to that certain group of people that he was talking to? Well, I'm telling you about the promises of God. When you as children of God pick up a promise that God has given to you, given to you it is your promise. Every promise in this book is in Christ Jesus. Everything he says, right, is for us. Every promise is for us if we claim it. And so I was comforted in certain times that I was a child of God and that God was on my side and that God would save my children. God is more, 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 more than we think of. He does so much more. He is so much more involved in our lives than we give Him credit for. And so today as... Um, we go on out and lead the church. Some of us have different places to go. Some of us really don't have that much going on today. But it doesn't change. Our activities doesn't change what's in our heart. Amen. Right? And in our mind. Yeah. I always, my mother always said Mother's Day is just another day because every day is Mother's Day. Every day is Mother's Day and I've always tried to remember. You know, I would rather be one that um, I would never be happy if my kids only called me once a year and said Happy Mother's Day. I like hearing it every day. You know, Mama love you. Thanks, Mom. Or Mama need you. You know, that's what being a mom is. Yeah. Mom, I'm 30 years old, but I still need you to rub my, <coughs> rub my feet when they hurt. My goodness. Joe, my son, was one of these kids that I, ha I had to look at every ouchie. You guys, did your kids do that to you? No, they they no they no they don't. But you know what? I don't know why. For all, I don't know why. But that was just one thing about Joe. If he had like a scratch, like this little tiny thing, I woke up the other day and I had this little scratch. I had to look at it. Every mosquito bite, every scratch, every toenail that broke off down on the skin it didn't matter I had to look at it and this went on I can remember one time when he was 16 years old and he come in and there I sat at the table looking at whatever little bump he had on his leg but you know what that's what mom is being all about right it is they want to know that somebody cares for them. Now when the kids got more and more and they got older and older, I used to send them out the door because, I, hey, I'm, I'm, at, at heart I'm a real cruel person. I had this bottle, and this is true, Amanda, you'll tell, you know I don't lie. I had this bottle of, of methylate. Do you guys remember that? Kids have never heard of it now. You remember how it burned? That was my answer. You come in here and you're whining about your scratches and your hurts, or I'll take care of it. I'll get the methylate. You only have to do that once. All whining was gone because them kids was constant. I mean, we had, between Kevin and I, we had those five kids and they were all outside and they played all day long and it was constant, 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 constant. So I'd just get that bottle and set it in the windowsill. You know, it's like, 
does that hurt? No, no, don't hurt. I'm gonna go wash it off. Okay, go wash it off. No, if it hurts, let me know. I'll help you. No, 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 that's fine. See, if you're gonna be a, a sane mother, you gotta figure out how to handle, I don't remember what it was Amanda told me she said the other day. I said, there you go, man, you got it. I can't remember, see, I can't remember anything, but I thought, now that was smart. You know, something she told the kids that was like, hey, I'm a little bit smarter than they are. You gotta stay on your toes if you wanna remain smarter than your kids. Cause they won't realize how smart you are until they're about 25 and for some it's even longer than that till they realize how smart you are right now they just think you don't know anything they and and, and you know you got to keep up with them being a mom isn't easy but what makes it easier is knowing that God is on your side and what makes it easier is knowing that when there's a battle, he's a God of battles. And whenever somebody messes with you, that they're messing with him. Okay? And that he is going to save your children. You need to claim that. You need to claim that for your children. Whether they're newborns, whether they're full-grown adults. Claim the salvation of God for your children. Because it's in His Word. You may stand. I did a real bad thing this week. Lots of them. This is the worst I've ever done. but God's on my side. Amanda got in the car the other day and I said, uh, I know what I want the mother to do.